Hello again, viewers, and greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night, and welcome to episode 9 of my in-depth investigation into the process of breeding bees in Minecraft. In today's episode, we are going to go over here to the boggy branch. And in this branch, you are going to find four different bees. One of them is a hive bee, a marshy bee, and then the other three are going to need to breed yourself the damp, boggy, and fungal bees. Some quick information about them. They do prefer damp conditions, but normal uh, climates otherwise. Uh, they can tolerate a little bit in either direction, a little bit warmer, a little bit drier, but... Uh, it's, it's best to work with them in places like the jungle or a marsh or a swamp or, or whatever biome you have that is a moist biome that is going to be typically what you'll need. They do need mushrooms as their flowers, so grab yourself some mushrooms and plant them when it's dark or in a dark location so you can have them nearby your, your breeding house, whether it's an apiary, an alfiary, whatever. Now, they do not put out much. They, they are a pretty low on the productivity uh, pyramid, and they have rather short lives. So if you're going to go after this branch for uh, their, their product, you're going to have to breed a lot of them and, and uh, have the, the queen cycle a lot just to get a little bit of output. Um, now, the damp and boggy bees do have an effect, and it is slowness. I have gotten a weird effect for uh, weakness uh, out of them, but they, they do slow you down and make you rather uh, unhappy in general. So you are going to want to have an apiary suit if you, want, if you want to avoid the effect caused by those bees. The other effect that you need to know about is from the fungal bee, the mushroomy, I tried to hit an E to escape, is the mushroom effect, and that's the fungal bee there. And the mushroom effect is interesting. Any regular mushrooms, the brown or red mushrooms that you just have on the ground, like these guys here, uh, any uh, of the fungal bees that are in the area of a uh, mushroom that is one of those small ones that has room to grow, the mushroom effect will cause those mushrooms to blossom into the giant mushrooms that you can find in the mushroom uh, area, like the mushroom islands or, or mushroom shore or whatever. Um, now, the output from this branch, you're typically going to get this mossy comb which you will get some beeswax and honey drops from once you run them through the centrifuge. However, the fungal bees will give you this fungal comb as well, which produces some beeswax, but more importantly, it produces both kinds of mushrooms. So you can use this to get a whole bunch of mushrooms without having to manually farm them over and over and over. So now, let's go over to visit the Boggy Branch, and hopefully this won't crash when I do this. I, uh, I have a, a problem with crashing uh, when changing ages while recording, but not lately, so here's to hoping. Let's go visit the Boggy Branch. Marvelous. It did not crash. All right. I have this set up in a jungle biome, so it's got the... Uh, uh, warm and damp conditions for you and I have the demonstration here for the different bees you're going to be breeding in this branch. The first one is going to requiver, requiver, require a hive bee and I have that labeled as level 1 because you get it from a hive and a common bee which is a, a level 2 bee. If you need to know how to make that you can find out by going through here over to the common bee uh, or by watching my common uh, video, or my APES video, uh, that I have before this one. The first bee here, the damp bee, at level 3, is... Uh, I actually got a drone from that, too. Um, the 
damp bee that I bred took uh, just a couple generations to try to breed it. And as you can see from here, it also has some cultivated traits. Because when you are doing breeding with bees, that can produce other traits or other breeds. Every once in a while, the inactive traits or sometimes even the active traits will borrow from another branch of or another species of bee altogether. So that's where that, that cultivated cropped in was from uh, the, the uh, apes branch because the common can produce cultivated when mixed with marshy and that's what happened now let's see here i need um what was this damp i need to get a damp princess so you can see a side by side here and as you can see the active traits are a little bit different as well as most of the inactive traits and even some of this is changed for the inactive. Uh, the output even has a little bit difference because it was bred from a hive or from a common bee. The the common attributes gave it some uh, regular honeycomb for the output, and that is something you're going to have to keep in mind. Is if your line isn't overly stable, you can get some other attributes and outputs from other bees. But I will leave these here in this chest so that if you wish to download this map, you can take a look at them yourself. And before I move over there, I do apologize for this. This ectoplasm here came from another bee that I bred nearby on this map. Uh, and it is everywhere. But anyway, here's the damp bee. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can expect, typically... To get a couple drones out of this and the comb let's see here was there mossy comb will when run through centrifuge uh, get you about a stack of beeswax and almost a stack of honey drops so that's a, a pretty high yield from those but it does take a lot of uh, cycles in order to get the productivity enough to even get a stack. Alright, moving on to the Boggy Bee, which is a level 4 bee because it requires a level 3 bee to make. We need a Damp Bee, which you just got over there, and another Marshy. Breed those together, and I have some stock here for you to play with if you wish to get a Boggy be here. What, or uh, no, I, uh, what am I after? Yeah, the boggy. And I have a marshy output there. I got a princess and a drone. That's kind of nice. But let's also go ahead and grab a <clears throat> excuse me boggy princess for side by side. And let's identify this. All right. This is the spawned one. As you can see, and I'm clicking rapidly here, there are no differences. I actually managed to, at least on this page, breed a purebred boggy bee. That's kind of nice. But it did take me 13 generations to do it. Wow, and this is... Oh, well, those aren't important. This is, this is a purebred boggy. Wow. That's kind of rare to get a purebred uh, off of the the first attempt breed. That means that it's not likely to regress to an older form of bee. So that's pretty pretty nice there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave these here for you to look at. And if you want to look at the drone as well, you may. Um, now, you don't see any mushrooms here. I should mention this. And the reason for that is... I have to put the mushrooms in a place where the daylight isn't going to kill them. So I have dug little chambers under the ground. And uh, they're either directly underneath the apiaries. I don't remember if I put them straight down or off to the side. But uh, they are down uh, a couple blocks down underneath the ground so that you can actually... Uh, have the bees breeding. Otherwise, they, they won't be able to breed without a mushroom nearby. 
or, or do their uh, productive cycle. Anyway, the output here for the Boggy Bee, you can expect to get about two drones out of them, and as you can see, almost no comb. But the comb which you do get, which is the same as over here, the mossy comb, you can get the uh, about a stack of the beeswax and honey drop, just like I showed you before. So these are low on productivity, and they have a really short life, but the, the comb that you get will give you uh, some, some good output there. Next up, we have the fungal bee, and this is the last one in this chain here. It requires a damp bee and a boggy bee, both of which, as you can see, are from this branch, to get you one of these fungal bees if you are lucky. And this is a, a rare breeding. Uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and bring in... What happened? It's space. A princess. All right, first off, let's see how long that took. Ten tries. Ten tries to get this thing. All right, now let's do a side-by-side. -side. Not too hugely different. Got the, uh, the mushroom versus the slowness effect. And I will show you the slowness effect here in just a moment. But other than that, and maybe some of the... Nope. The environmental conditions are the same as well. That's kind of interesting. All right. I will put these in here for you to look at as well. But let's take a look at the output here. You can expect to get about two drones. And generally, you can get about one comb from one cycle of a queen. And as you can see, there uh, are both fungal and mossy that you can get from the fungal bees. Now, the fungal comb... We'll get you some beeswax, but like I said, it will also get you some mushrooms. And it's almost a stack, so it's almost a one-for-one, one, just shy of one-for-one. One. Now, about the, that fungal thing. What I did was I just spammed the entire area in here with mushrooms and tossed an apiary in here with a clear view of the sky and just ran the bees once. And it made a nearby mushroom turn into a giant red mushroom. I probably should have had some of these be the beige mushrooms, but oh well. But that's what you're going to get out of that, that fungal effect. Also, important to note, the fungal branch is necessary for doing part of the fossilized branch later on. So this is a prerequisite for a later branch. But... That is it for all that you really need to know about the fungal bees. Uh, I do have the bee suit here for the damp and, and boggy effects if you want to work with those. And a bed in case you want to sleep at night. But that is, like I said, pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and informative. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please do leave them in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. I appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my next stuff comes out. If you wish to have a copy of this map for yourself, the download link will be available in the description below. And uh, I, once I'm done with the series, I will be uploading a second version of the map so you can see some of the other uh, details that I have added during the course of this series. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you very much for watching. Once again, this is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.